What's up guys, Silver here with another Halo Master Chief Collection Achievement Guide. This time we're doing part 7 of our Halo 3 ODST Lasso Run. This is Data Hive. Start up this mission. We're going to walk forward, activate our visor mode to make it a little easier to see. And there's a bunch of goodies for us to pick up right here in the beginning. There's a couple frags to the left. There is a full plasma pistol on the ground here, so we're going to pick that up. So we have a pistol and our plasma pistol, and there's a health pack on the door that we don't even need. Another full plasma pistol in the middle here as we walk through. And uh, if you have a co-op buddy, he could pick that up. And we have a couple plasma grenades on the ground here I'm going to pick up by these two dead grunts. So we want to keep moving forward from the second plasma grenade, and as soon as we can, we want to cut into the right of this long winding hallway. And we're going to go up the right side of this hallway now. You can see there's a couple grunts in the distance here. We're going to run right past them. Sometimes they see you, sometimes they don't. Either way, you can run right past them, even if they're shooting at you. You can make it through to the next section without even having to worry about taking them out. You could take it slow and take them out if you want to, but we're just running up the right side here again. And once we get to this point, we want to cut into the left up against this thin panel. There's a couple thin panels in the middle of this hallway here, and I'm just going to stand here at the first one. This gives the next wave of grunts that come through this door that we need to go through time to move forward. Unfortunately, one of them decided to just stand next to the door and not move forward with his buddies, but that's okay. Even if you're discovered by all of them and they are all starting to shoot you, just move forward, run past them through this door. Once you're in this hallway, you want to turn to the left and just run up the left side of this hallway until it starts curving towards the right. At that point, you want to cut diagonally across to the right side of the hallway, and you should be able to avoid most of the damage from those jackals, and we'll be able to move on to these four grunts up ahead. We do want to take these guys out. They'll be facing you and most likely throw plasma grenades. You just want to headshot a couple of them. That will get the remainder to actually run away, and we'll just have to chase the remainder down, which is fine with me. It looks like there's only one because I headshot one, and then a grunt threw a terrible nade and blew himself up along with a buddy, so we only had to track one of these guys down as they ran away. And we're going in this direction anyway, so uh, there's a health pack on all of the walls in these circular areas. So this is a series of circular rooms connected by hallways, and each circular area has a health pack on the wall. So we're going to move up here, and this first wave of enemies is going to be a brute and three jackals. It's always random which one comes out first. It looks like it was the three jackals this time, and the brute is kind of hanging back. These jackals in particular don't put their shields up right away, so you can see I headshot a couple of them really quick, and then I was able to backsmack that one as he was running away in fear. And then as for the Brute, we of course used the Noob Combo, which is the Overcharged Plasma Pistol, to collapse his shields and then switch to the pistol for the headshot kill. The next wave of enemies is going to be a Brute and three Grunts instead of three Jackals, so we'll just kind of take our time, just hang back here. You don't want to get into that hallway because the grenades that they are going to throw are going to be a lot harder to dodge if you're in that narrow hallway. So just kind of hang back in the previous room and headshot the Grunts from far away. And then we could close in on the Brute and kill him with the Overcharged Plasma Pistol and then the headshot from the regular pistol. Of course, we're going to grab any uh, of these health packs on the wall as we go. Now we are in a section where there is a Marine or a police Marine, military police guy over here, whatever he is. We're going to wait here for that console to turn a lighter color from red to a light green or a light blue. Then we'll activate it, hop on top of this, and then we'll drop down onto this uh, console thing on the opposite side from where we activated it as the buggers come up, and then we could drop down here. Then we're going to exchange our plasma pistol for the fresh one on the ground here, and then we're going to grab the carbine on the other side of the doorway here and just juggle it forward. We're going to come back and grab that later. There's a couple buggers in this area, and sometimes they see you and turn around, sometimes they don't. This time around, I got lucky, and they did not turn, so I was able to backsmack one of them. There is a health pack on this side hallway right here, so grab that if you need it. I'm going to save it for later, but we're going to go through here and wrap up around to the side of this brute. There's usually a brute over here, so I'm going to noob combo him real quick. And there's a couple grunts in the area as well, so you want to be aware of them. Sometimes your uh, buddy who's following you around now takes him out or helps take him out. Sometimes uh, you have to take him out. So this time around, I had to take out both. Obviously, you want to be aware that sometimes they turn into uh, suicide grunts when you kill their brute leader there, so watch out for that. You want to stay back in the hallway so they don't come right around the corner and blow up in your face. But now towards the right over here, there's going to be three invisible brutes, and they throw firebombs. So we want to just use our noob combo to take these guys out as well. I like to wait for them to stop moving and start going into the animation of throwing a firebomb, because you know they're not going to dodge if they're in the middle of a throwing animation. So at this point, I want to grab all the firebombs I can, up to three. We're going to save these firebombs for one of the final segments in this mission, so save those if you can. Try not to throw them. At this point, I'm going to turn around and take out the remaining buggers, which there was only one this time because there's only two, and I took out one on my way here, so I turned around and took out the last remaining guy, grabbed the carbine from that brute we killed, and I'm going to go back and grab the carbine that we juggled through the door here. So grab that. I sped this part up, obviously. I'm going in here and grabbing the health pack I showed you guys earlier that I was saving for later. And now we're going to move up with a carbine and a plasma pistol and a bunch of grenades. So at this point, I'm going to go through this doorway. There's another carbine to the right side of the door, so you can see I grabbed that on my way in. 
and there's uh, going to be four buggers that fly into this room. So you can see I grabbed the carbine and then quickly retreated uh, and allowed my buddy here to move up and kind of distract all these guys. And now that they're not focused on me, I could just kind of wait here calmly for them to land somewhere and then go for that headshot instead of trying to shoot them while they're flying around all over the place. So this guy landed. I'm going to backsmack him. So it's just totally random how they land, where they land. So just kind of be patient in this hallway here and take these guys out slowly. At this point, I'm just looking for that health pack because, like I mentioned, there is a health pack in each of these circular rooms. So sometimes you may not need it and you may just skip on by it, but sometimes you probably want to grab it. So I grabbed that one, and we're going to move into this next section, and there's going to be a doorway up ahead that's open, and there's going to be jackals and a brute. So we're going to take our time here because they're easier to take out when they are closer, especially the jackals because they have the shields and they are tough to uh, land a headshot on when they have their shield up. You can see I almost got a headshot there, but I was not able to land the shot. And now they're just staring at me with that, uh, with their shields up. So this is not great. I'm going to just close the gap, strategically take some damage. I know I'm going to get hit by a few shots here, but I'm going to close the gap and noob combo this brute real quick so we can at least deal with him, and then we only have the jackals to deal with. So I took out the brute as intended, and now I'm just kind of laying into these jackals, hoping to land a headshot there because they are distracted by my buddy and exposing their heads, and I took out one. Now I'm going to grab my health pack here. And I'm going to move up ahead, and we're going to noob combo the jackal, but instead of landing the headshot after we collapse his shield, we're just going to follow him because most of the time when you collapse their shield, they tend to run away fairly slowly, so you can get up behind them and backsmack him for the quick kill and also get your stamina back due to the black eye skull. So now we're turning our attention to the next room. More grunts in here, so we're going to headshot these three guys. One of the jackals that was in this room uh, previously actually ran into that next room, so that's why there was a jackal in there. And now we're going to noob combo this brute up ahead here and there's uh, more brutes in store in the next room so we're going to continue noob comboing these guys obviously uh, eventually you're going to run out of plasma pistol but when you do that there's obviously a bunch of grunts and jackals throughout all these rooms so you could always grab more plasma pistol from those guys fortunately there's two brutes here that had carbines so we should be set for carbine ammo we'll just keep coming back and refilling it as we need to but up ahead here there's more grunts and a brute so as you can see, these rooms start to get a little repetitive. There's only so many uh, combinations of enemies that are going to be thrown your way, plus all the rooms look the same. So uh, we'll just deal with them how we've been dealing with them, which is for the grunts, just stay back in the previous room so you don't get too close to those grenades they're throwing. Just headshot them, and then we will turn our attention to the lone brute. And as I was going to approach this brute to noob combo him, I realized I was out of plasma pistol, so I went backwards. I just sped this part up here and grabbed a plasma pistol from one of these dead grunts or jackals, like I mentioned you could do and should do. And now we will try it again here with a plasma pistol that actually has a charge, and we'll be able to take him out quickly and easily. And at this point, I'm going to need to exchange my plasma pistol for ones on the ground more frequently, because the ones you pick up from these dead grunts and jackals don't have as much charge as the ones we picked up earlier in the mission, which had full charges. So I'm going to uh, be doing that more often. But we're going to turn to the right here now. There's going to be a bunch of brutes down at the end of this hallway, four brutes to be exact. So we'll just kind of wait for them to come down the hallway. We'll noob combo them. They can't really dodge because they're in that narrow hallway. So we could use that to our advantage. They're throwing nades, though. They're not happy about it. So we'll just wait for that to go off, and then we'll poke our heads around the corner again, take out the third one. And then there's one more remaining down here at the end of the hall. So we'll take him out in the same way, and then I'm just going to go backwards and try to find the best plasma pistol I can because we're going to progress to the next part of the mission, and we can't go back and get a better plasma pistol. So I skipped ahead about a minute. I took a long time. Uh, trying to gather the best plasma pistol, but I'm going to grab health now, and we're going to go down over here. There's going to be another uh, console we need to activate, which will get this kind of cylinder to pop up, which will expose a hole in the floor that we're going to jump down into so we could get down to the level below the level we're on right now, down to level 9, and then we'll progress to the next part of the mission, which is actually uh, one of the toughest parts of the mission, I think. You're going to be noob comboing a lot of brutes up ahead here, so we're going to jump down like I mentioned. And there's actually two health packs, so you should grab one before you move forward. I apparently forgot to grab health on this run, but that's okay. We're going to make it through just fine. I'm just looking at the ground here to make sure I have the carbine out, so I'm going to shoot the grunt on the left. You want to look to the left and right of this structure. Sometimes there's a grunt who's an easy kill. Uh, there's going to be three grunts initially and a brute, so you want to kill the three grunts quickly. Kill the brute, and for the grunts that you just killed, or in the process of killing, you want to try to take note of which weapon they had, whether it's a needler or a plasma pistol. And if it's a plasma pistol, you want to kind of take a note of that and just remember where it was dropped, because we want to come back and grab that once we're out of plasma pistol in this one that we currently have. So we're going to just noob combo all these guys. This is really a noob combo clinic that we're going to put on here. 
and once you are out of plasma pistol switch to your new plasma pistol or one of the ones you find on the ground from these dead grunts sometimes you have more sometimes you have less it's totally random what weapons the grunts spawn with so we're going to continue noob comboing all these guys there's a bunch of brutes up ahead including a chieftain with a plasma turret so you want to save that one for last ideally i'm going to actually end up killing him second to last but what you want to do for that guy is you don't want to noob combo him and then finish him off with a headshot you want to collapse his shield with an overcharge burst, but then you want to wrap up around behind him and assassinate him for the quick kill because he has a helmet on and you can't simply just shoot him in the head real quick for the kill. But you can see I'm just running backwards here to grab the health pack on this kind of center island console here in the middle of the hallway. Again, there's two health packs in the room previous to this area that we dropped down into. But back to how we're going to deal with the chief, and we're basically going to get close to him and then overcharge plasma pistol him, which will stun him temporarily. And then we will use that time to wrap up around behind him. So you want to make sure when you stun him, you're close to him already. So we're just going to continue noob comboing these guys. Pretty repetitive, and obviously you can see they're all distracted by your buddy up here, so try to get him to move forward so he distracts all these guys for you like this. And I am about to find out that I am out of plasma pistol ammo, so I'm going to have to go backwards and grab another plasma pistol. You can see I threw a spike grenade. The reason for that is not to kill him, but just to get him to dodge around and not fire at me. So I always try to throw a spike grenade if that's what I'm looking for, if I just want them to not shoot me for a little bit while I escape. Just throw a grenade and they will dodge out of the way most likely. We closed in close to this chieftain and then we were able to overcharge burst him with the plasma pistol real quick and wrap up around behind him to smack him in the back as he was stunned. A lot of times it's you who has to get close to him but this time he kind of ran towards us which was nice. Typically you have to go behind cover and then dash behind another piece of cover and kind of leapfrog between different things until you get close to him. At this point we cleared out all of the enemies and we want to move forward with our carbine and instead of going to the right we want to just keep moving forward here. There's going to be a dead end but there's going to be a health pack in the back right corner of the wall here and sitting nicely on the ground next to this health pack in the same corner is a flamethrower so we're actually going to pick this up and uh, i usually don't use the flamethrower but it actually turns out this is pretty useful in this next section so we're going to speed this part up because you walk slowly with the flamethrower but we're going to get to this next section and we're going to turn to the right there's going to be a carbine on the ground so you could fill up on carbine ammo here and there's also going to be a health pack in that corner and there's going to be a health pack in the opposite corner but you should have full health at this point from the health pack by the flamethrower. But if you're playing co-op, you may want one of your buddies to grab one of these. But now that we're fully loaded, we'll continue on to the next part of the mission, which is going to be a bunch of enemies, buggers, jackals, and a brute, who are going to be facing the door on the opposite side of this room that you enter from. And they're just going to be shooting at it. And sometimes you can make it over to this uh, glass panel over here without them seeing you. Sometimes they do see you. This time around, they saw me, so I'm just going to hang here until they get a little closer. This flamethrower actually has pretty good distance, more than I recall. Um, it's a little surprising how far it actually carries, but we're just going to hang here. And you could use the third-person camera to your advantage here. You could see I'm safely behind this wall, but I could actually rotate my camera to kind of look around corners without exposing myself, really. So I could just kind of wait for them to get in range, and then I could just unload with the flamethrower here. And the reason I use this weapon here is because it's very effective, but also there's a lot of ammo in it, and you don't really have that much ammo at this point. You have a bunch of carbine, but pretty much all of these enemies are easier to take out with the flamethrower, especially the jackals because obviously they have the shield, and it's annoying to get them to lower their shield or to deplete it. Uh, we don't have a plasma pistol at this point, probably, uh, because we may have used it in the previous section, but with the flamethrower, you just kind of tag them a little bit with the flames, and then they just melt away easily. So we're going to drop the flamethrower if we ever need to go back and get health. There's health on the wall back here, so you want to drop the flamethrower by that glass panel because obviously you move faster without the flamethrower. And then we could always just come back and pick it back up and continue on killing these guys where we left off. Uh, there's also the two health packs in the previous section that I was pointing out if you didn't already pick them up. And I took a little bit of damage killing these last enemies here, but I'm actually not going to go all the way back and get a health pack. The reason for that is we're about to trigger a cutscene. And once you trigger a cutscene, whenever you come out of the cutscene, it actually spawns you in with full health and stamina. So you don't have to worry about uh, having full health or stamina at this point. So we're going to go down this hallway. Uh, hit the action button by this door. It will trigger the cutscene. I skip that. We are now spawned in here with Dare, and she will be helping us out. For this next section, I like to let Dare move ahead because she will serve two purposes. One is she will serve as a good distraction, so most of the Covenant will be focused on her instead of you, and you can kind of hang back and pick off enemies as you see fit, as you're able to. And two, she is extremely grenade happy, much like the grunts. She'll just start chucking frag grenades, whether you're in her line of sight or not. So she will just end up grenading you and killing you a lot of the time if you are in front of her. So just stay behind her. And if you do want to go in front of her, I would advise going very far in front of her because she will chuck grenades all day, every day, really. 
So we're going to move forward. There's going to be a bunch of different enemies in this hallway. There's going to be grunts and a brute initially. So really, we're just kind of seeing the same combinations of enemies that we were seeing in those circular rooms connected by hallways. But now they're just out here in the big windy hallway. So there's a bubble shield up here. We could wait for it to collapse and then noob combo him, or we could go up close to him, noob combo him when we're right in his face, and then that will get him to move forward and we could back smack him, kind of like we did with the chieftain earlier. A little more risky because he could obviously stick you or smack you or brute shot you right in your face. But once you kind of master that move, it's a very good way to take out brutes quickly and easily and also get your stamina back. That move is all about timing and positioning really, but if you're not feeling it, if you don't want to risk it, just kind of wait for the bubble shield to collapse or wait for him to step out of the bubble shield and then you can finish him off with the regular old uh, noob combo that we've been using through the whole mission here. Gets a little repetitive at this point because we're, like I mentioned, kind of dealing with the same groups of enemies while going through the same types of hallways and rooms here. It's kind of like the library of ODST, but the library is much better, of course. But anyway, I digress. We're still just fighting these guys. You can see Dare is up there distracting him, like I mentioned. You want her to move forward, distract all these guys. What you don't want to do necessarily is let her get too far away. You want to try to kill these guys as quickly as she's moving forward, because at some point, if you don't uh, keep up with the killing, she will just run past enemies and uh, go all the way to the final section of this area and then you're kind of caught in a position where there's a bunch of enemies in between you and dare and uh she's no longer serving as a distraction because she's too far ahead and that actually ends up happening to me on this run so you'll see that happen shortly um, but you can see i also grabbed a health pack in the center of the room there's those uh kind of islands that are kind of in the middle of the hallway but higher than the rest of the stuff around them they're kind of like cubicles in the middle of the hallway here most of them are empty and don't have a health pack where you would expect to see them you can see there's kind of a spot for health to be but it's not there but one of these does have health and i already grabbed it we're getting towards the end of this hallway here there's a brute there's some jackals there are going to be some buggers up ahead as well and the jackals are going to give me an issue here i'm going to try to noob combo them to collapse their shield and then run up behind them and smack them in the back for the kill. But you can see I'm out of Plasma Pistol at this point, so I need to run backwards and try to grab a fresh one. And I just threw a spike grenade like I do to get them to dodge. You can see they kind of dodged out of the way, and that allowed me uh, some time to escape while they were not shooting at me. So I grabbed a fresh Plasma Pistol now, and I'm going to try again to attack these jackals. I'm going to try to collapse both of their shields at the same time, so none of them are shooting at me. They'll run away in fear. We got one. And now two, now I could go up behind them and back smack them for the one hit kill and also the stamina boost or the stamina regeneration. But unfortunately, as I was getting close to these jackals so I could back smack them, I was sent back by these buggers. They kind of pushed me back. I didn't want to risk moving forward because I thought the buggers might actually kill me before I could get those jackals. So I ran backwards yet again. But I'm going to skip ahead here about a minute because I'm literally just running backwards trying to find a health pack. But it turns out I already grabbed all of the health packs. I wanted to try to go up against these jackals uh, with a full health situation, but unfortunately I'm going to have to try my luck here uh, with the health and stamina I've been given here. But I'm just going to try the same strategy we did earlier, which is overcharge them with a plasma pistol that will collapse their shields. They will probably run away, and uh, hopefully they won't run directly away from us like they did last time. Hopefully they'll kind of run around in circles a little bit more, so that will allow us to get behind them and back smack them. And that is what happens this time, fortunately. So we could back smack them, get our shield back, and then back smack the second one, and we'll be able to move on to the next section with full stamina at least. I don't know about our uh, health situation, but our stamina is good to go right now. You can see I exchanged my plasma pistol for one of those Jackal's plasma pistols, so we have a somewhat full plasma pistol. Obviously it's not super full due to the famine skull, but it's as full as it's going to get. Grab the health on the wall here before you drop down this hole. We're going to take some fall damage, but there are four health packs on the bottom here, so grab one of these. And then I like to move forward and I try to headshot as many jackals as possible because they don't have their shields up right away. Sometimes you could get up to two I've gotten before. Uh, I've never gotten all three. You could usually get one because obviously uh, they don't know you're there right away. And then sometimes you get the second one. After I try that, I go back over here and I just let Dare move forward. She's not going to run ahead uh, super far like she did uh, in the previous section. There's only so far she could go here. So she is super need happy. Like I mentioned, and especially in this section it seems, because it seems like there's not as much room to dodge her nades, especially when they're flying right at your face. So I like to just kind of stay back, let Dare move forward, and there's a bunch of grunts in here too, and they like to throw grenades, and brutes like to throw the nade, uh, the occasional nade from time to time. So we're just going to let that all happen. A lot of times the uh, grunts are not great at decision making, so they'll actually throw a grenade and end up sticking themselves or hitting a wall next to them and it just drops at their feet and explodes and kills them or their buddies sometimes. 
And much like those grunts I was just talking about, Dare also likes to throw grenades directly at a wall right in front of her. So you're going to see that happen a lot here. You want to be aware of Dare constantly because she's going to throw grenades. And some of them will fly at the Covenant and some of them will bounce directly back at you. So watch out for that. You can see she's having a field day trying to throw grenades at this brute down here. And she's just ending up, you know, throwing grenades at herself essentially. So we're going to chip in from far behind her. You could noob combo the brute from far away to help out. And uh, we could uh, deliver some headshots where we can. But just let Dare take the lead on this because, my God, look at that nonsense. Once we get uh, all these enemies dead, we're going to move forward. There is a health pack up ahead here, so I'm going to grab this one. If you need to, you could grab the three health packs that remained in the previous section as we jump down to this area. Exchange your plasma pistol for a beam rifle here and also go up here to this carbine crate and grab all the ammo you can here. So you should have a full beam rifle and a full carbine. You can see I'm jumping here. You want to continuously jump until I stop jumping. We're going to turn to the left at this last ramp on the left here and we're going to go up and you want to stop jumping as soon as you get to this small set of stairs up here. So right before we go up those stairs, we want to stop jumping. That will get us a checkpoint. By jumping, we were delaying the checkpoint, and now we're going to move this left fusion core over towards the other side of the map. We're just going to push it. Don't smack it or melee it. Obviously, that will get it to explode. What you want to do is just walk into it. That will be enough to propel it forward, and that way we'll have three fusion cores all gathered up. We're going to form a little bundle of fusion cores. So once you get them all in the same general area, you basically want to make a little triangle of fusion cores here. So you can see we got them all here. We want to move this one right up against the other one that's upright. And then we're going to use this one to kind of form the third point of the triangle. So just kind of wedge it in here in between the two uh, other fusion cores here. It doesn't have to be an exact uh, symmetrical triangle or anything, but just kind of do as best you can to make a little triangle of fusion cores. You can see this one's not even upright. It's turned over. But we're going to jump on top, and we're going to do a triple fusion core jump to get to the top of the ledge up there. You can see there is a Covenant crate of ammo up there. We're trying to aim for the platform to the right of that crate. So you want to look straight down, run, jump, and shoot right after jumping. That will give you enough boost so you can get up to this platform that we're talking about. I'll show it again in slow motion. You're just staring directly down at the fusion cores. Run forward, jump, and right after you jump, you want to shoot so it blows up the fusion core It'll set off a chain reaction, exploding all of them, and it'll explode you upwards and onto the catwalk here. You can see I landed on the catwalk a little to the side of the platform I was aiming for, but this works too. You want to make sure that you don't get blasted a little too far to the right and hit your head on this catwalk, because obviously you won't make the jump in that case, but you want to make sure you have full health before trying that. You could do this with two fusion cores, but it's just easier with three. And if you fail the jump, just hit start, save, and quit, and resume. There's no enemies or anything down here, so you could set it up as many times as you need to to despawn those buggers. It makes this whole section up here a lot easier. You can see I'm just speeding this part up and skipping past everything where there would normally be a bunch of buggers. Grab the health pack before going into this hallway here. There's two more health packs on the wall here and two more health packs on the wall down towards the left. So you should have full health even if you have a four player squad. Everyone should have full health at this point. We're going to drop down here and there's going to be two brutes in the distance. Well three brutes. Two brutes we're going to take out with the beam rifle in the distance. They're just your regular old run of the mill brutes. So we'll take these guys out. Three shots with the beam rifle will actually collapse their shields and then you could land the headshot. You could land the headshot on the third shot to collapse their shields as well but I did not in this case. Just three body shots and then you could aim for the head if you would like, or you could switch to the carbine. I'm actually going to skip ahead because I tried to take out this chieftain from up here with the beam rifle and the carbine, but I ended up just wasting a ton of ammo. Tried to do a little improv there. I'm like, why do I not take this guy out in the same way as the other two brutes? But the reason is he just absorbs all the damage, apparently. Uh, maybe you could take him out that way, but I would recommend this way, which is just drop down with him. One of his most common attacks is to actually just kind of lunge towards you and then swing with his hammer. What you want to do is wrap around to the left so he misses you with the hammer, and then as he kind of is recovering, you wrap up around behind him and backsmack him for the one-hit kill. Super clean and easy. Now we're going to move ahead, and before we activate the cutscene where we retrieve Virgil, the engineer, we want to make sure we get full carbine, and there's a carbine crate up here. So gather as much of that as you can, and also there is a crate of plasma pistols, so we're going to exchange that beam rifle for a full plasma pistol. We have a full carbine and plasma pistol at this point. Ignore the health packs on the side of the door, because like I mentioned previously, once you come out of a cutscene, you have full health and stamina, so don't waste a health pack. We want to save those for later once we come out of the cutscene. Run up to this door and hit the action button to trigger the cutscene. I skipped ahead a little bit, skipped the cutscene. We're going to come out and we're going to turn to the left. We want to noob combo the three brutes that are being dropped off by the phantom up here. So just noob combo these guys as they're jumping down. You'll be able to take them out fairly easily. And then once you take out these three guys, you want to turn your attention to the phantoms behind you. There's a phantom on the left and the right. You want to focus on the one on the left because the enemies coming out of that phantom are predominantly grunts and you could quickly headshot them and kill them pretty quickly. You can see on the right a bunch of jackals are being dropped off and those guys are much harder to take out quickly. 
So we're going to focus on taking out the grunts as fast as possible over here first. And we want to have our fire bombs ready. Remember I mentioned we're collecting fire bombs for the end of the mission. This is the reason. So we can quickly take out jackals because there's a handful of jackals that you can see poured out of that phantom. And it takes a long time to deal with jackals. Typically, when we do the noob combo to get them to run away and then smack them, that's not that efficient when there's a bunch of brutes and grunts in the area as well, throwing nades all over the place, plus Buck and Dara throwing nades everywhere. So we want to kind of keep our distance from those guys and just kind of hang back, headshot all the grunts that we can, noob combo any brutes that we see, and firebomb any of the jackals that we see. Jackals should really be your last priority because brutes and grunts will do a lot more damage to Virgil, and this is really an escort mission at this point. If Virgil dies, then you have to immediately hit start, save, and quit, and then resume to go back to your last checkpoint. You don't want to have to go all the way back to the beginning of the mission because Virgil happened to die. So you want to make sure that you take out the brutes, ideally first, and the grunts because they throw nades like crazy, and the jackals don't really do as much damage, fortunately, so you can focus on them last. But if you do find some jackals, throw some firebombs at them. If you run out of firebombs, which you probably will because you can only carry three, uh, just start throwing other grenades at those jackals to get them to dodge out of the way at least and stop firing at you or at Virgil. Fortunately, Virgil is pretty resilient. He usually survives. He's much more resilient than Captain Keys, that's for sure. So we're going to grab that health pack on the wall right there. We're going to move over down here. I like to exchange my uh, pistol for a carbine, or not a carbine, a beam rifle at this point. So I have a carbine and a beam rifle. We're going to drop down this hole. We're going to move forward. And uh, we're actually going to turn around and then move forward. And there's a bunch of sleeping buggers. There's eight up on the roof here, or on the ceiling, rather. And we're going to just jump up and back smack these guys uh, as fast as possible because you could take all eight of them out, but sometimes Buck and Dare like to jump down here and start throwing grenades, which wakes them up. So try to take them out as fast as possible. I sped this part up. We're going to speed towards this door. And then I skipped ahead because you just wait here for Virgil to open up the door. So we open up this door. There's eight more buggers on the ceiling. So we're going to do the same thing. Most of the time you can't make it through all eight of these guys. They're usually woken up by Buck and Dare because they like to make a lot of noise. So take out as many as you can before they're woken up. And then once they do wake up, I like to just kind of hang back a little bit because they like to fly away into the final room that we're going to end up going to. So they fly into that narrow doorway and then into that room, and Buck and Dare like to go in there and throw a bunch of grenades. So they're going to do a lot of uh, actually good work with their grenades now that the buggers are awake. They could start throwing grenades. I just don't want them to throw grenades when the buggers are sleeping, you know? But now they're going to actually be an asset at this point. So just kind of hang back in this hallway, shoot the enemies as you see them. But it looks like Buck and Dare were able to take out the majority of the buggers that remained in here. So now at this point, we're totally done. No more enemies. We're going to run back into this elevator in this room here, and then Virgil will follow. No cutscene here at the end of this mission, it just rolls right into the next mission. And that mission is Coastal Highway, the final mission, the toughest mission in ODST. But we have some new tips and tricks this time around to make it a lot easier, so I'll see you back here for that one. Thanks for watching guys, if you found that video helpful, be sure to click on the scorpion icon to subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. You can also check out some related guides by clicking on the videos on screen, and you can find links in the description for other social media links of mine. Stay tuned for more Halo guides, and I'll see you in the next one.